probably as far as collecting people, collecting parts, collecting the, the, the tools and, and things that we need to make the car run 24 hours. It's a different car than you'll see the rest of the season. Um, on the outside, it appears the same, exactly the same, but there's bits and pieces in the car that are designed to go 24 hours that are very, very expensive that we wouldn't ordinarily run in a sprint race. The time that you lose going off the track, the time that you lose being in an accident, it's not worth it. It's better to run just good, consistent laps. So that's our strategy. Just keep all four wheels on the tarmac, uh, make our pit stops clean, get in and out in a minute, and, uh, and at the end of 24 hours, hopefully we'll be in, uh, on the podium. We've made good progress. I think the car is very easy to that's very important. It's going to be soft on the tires and the brakes, um, which is important because, it's, again, it's an endurance race, so you're not looking for absolute fastest lap time. Also, you know, you've got five drivers with different styles, and so it has to be a compromise between what every one of us likes best. This car talks to me. Um, sound, that sounds freaky and creepy, but when I mean, you're around something long enough, you don't even have to communicate. You just know. We need a car that's going to last for 24 hours, we got to make the tires last longer than we ordinarily would because we're going to try and go two, maybe three stints on these tires. Everybody's having to meet halfway and they know that I've been doing this a long time and they may not agree with me, they may not be happy about it, but in the back of their mind they know, well, Mike Fox has probably seen this, done this, or had it happen to him, so I'm not going to make that same mistake. I'm just going to do what he says. For me, coming from small dirt tracks in California, this is it.